We begin now at the top of Daf Nunam and Beis and Maseches Brachas. This is Brachas, Daf 50b. The Gemara just quoted a statement from Rav Huna. Rav Huna said that if you have three people coming from three different groups, and each group had three people in it, so they were all chayv in, in a uh, zimun, and now they join together, so they now are obligated in a zimun, and they cannot divide up. And now Rava gives a qualification of that halacha as follows. He says, V'lo Amr, Rava says, we don't say this is true. Elo delo akdimu hanuch ve'azmin alayhu b'dukhtayu. Only in a scenario where the previous groups that all these individuals came from did not do a zimun with them in their place. But if they've already done a zimun with their earlier groups, then the obligation of zimun leaves them. Rashi explains this in a bit more detail. Rashi says, You have these groups that these uh, individuals separated from, and they made a zimun. Uh, with them, Kagon, for example, the following case. Let's say you had four people in each group. So now, uh, even if one leaves from each group, there's still enough to make a zimun. And the people who are separating, they need to go to the marketplace. They had to leave, they had something to do, and this was before the groups finished. So if the uh, earlier groups, if they made a zimun with them, Kagon, Shinitstarfu, Elu, they can join them even when you go to the marketplace, even when you're far from the from the eating area. You can join in the zimun, as we said before. You can call to him and make a zimun with him. And each group made their own zimun. So those, they were there just for the zimun part, just for the beginning part of nevarich. And now they're coming to bench. Now all three of that, all, all three of these individuals who were from previous groups, who all really sort of joined that earlier zimun, now they come together to bench, lo mezamni. In that situation, Rav says they don't make a zimun, the parach minay, chov zimun, because the obligation of zimun has left them, v'sulo hadr alayu, it does not return. So the basic idea, Rashi here gives a much uh, much clearer idea of what's happening over here. Basically, you have these groups, these people are eating in different groups, and uh, in each group, one person needed to leave. So if they, if the individual who left never did any zimun at all, now all of these different uh, disparate individuals come together to form one group, they can actually bench together and make a zimun, and they should make a zimun, because they were obligated before. But if they were each each included in their old groups, even in a uh, in a smaller fashion, but they were included in the zimun, then their obligation uh, is no longer. Amar Rava Rava says, How can I show, how can I prove to you that this is true? That tonight we learned in the Mishnah as follows, If you have a bed that was either half of it was stolen, uh, half of it was lost, it was divided up by brothers, or it was divided up by partners, it becomes tahor because it's no longer one kli. And if it is put back together again, Again, mikabel is tuma mikanu lahaba. It is now mikabel tuma. It is a, it is considered a kli from now and onwards. So the Gemara says mikanu lahaba in lemafreyalo. You see that when you make it into a kli, it only becomes a kli from now forwards. It doesn't. There's nothing happens retroactively. Alma, you see, kaven de palgua parach la tuma mina. Once it was split up, all tuma leaves. Nothing goes back retroactive. It's completely tahor and it starts again. Hachanami here also kaven de azman alayu parach zimun minayu. Here, once these people did some kind of zimun with their earlier groups, that obligation leaves and it cannot retroactively come back when they join together to form a new group. The Gemara now continues quoting the Mishnah of Beis Chaburos V'chulu. The Mishnah said that if you have two groups and some in each group can see each other, so then they can join together. Tana, we learned in Ebrei, so im ye shamesh b'neim, if there's a server between them, someone who's serving both of them, shamesh mitzarf, and the shamesh can join them together since we are all we're two different groups, but we're all using the same shamish, that can make us all effectively considered one group. Uh, the Mishnah then said, It was machlokas in the Mishnah, whether or not you can make a bracha on wine if no water has been added. So the uh, Gemara here brings a brisa, which expands upon this a little bit. Tanur we learned in a brisa, Yayin, when it comes to wine, Before water gets in there to dilute it properly, you don't make a bore pre'agafen, you only make a bore pre'agafen, and you're allowed to use it to wash with. Uh, Rashi here explains that the idea is that regular fruit juices, uh, if it's not considered wine, you're allowed to use that for natilas yadayim. Mishanas and lesocho mayim. Once water is put in there, mevarchan olav bore pragafen. You make a bracha bore pragafen. The ain not lin mimenali yadayim. You're no longer allowed to use it for natilas yadayim. Divrei Rabbi Eliezer. That's the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. The chachamim or the chachamim bein kach uvein kach mevarchan olav bore pragafen. Doesn't matter whether water was added or not. You always make a bore pragafen on this. The ain not lin mimenali yadayim, and you never use it to wash with. So the Gemara now says, Keman Ozla Hada Amar Shmuel. Who does the following statement of Shmuel follow? Uh, Osa Adam called Sirachov Bipas. 
It says that you can do anything with bread. It doesn't need to be designated only for eating. It can be used for other things as well. Keman Rabbi Eliezer. That follows Rabbi Eliezer. As Rashi explains over here, the idea is that Rabbi Eliezer holds, just like you can use uh, fruit juices for washing the tilas yadayim, essentially he's saying it doesn't need to be used only for drinking. Whereas the Chachamim say that's considered a waste of the food, um, so they would not agree with using the fruit juice for washing. And likewise, they would not agree that the person can do anything he wants with bread. Amr Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Chanina says, Modim Chachamim Rabbi Eliezer, Bekos Shal Brach Hashem Mevarch and all of Achit and Lasoch Mayim. Even the Chachamim agree with Rabbi Eliezer when it comes to the Kos Shal Brach, the cup that's being used to bench over. There, you certainly do need to add water in order to use it as a Kos Shal Brach. My time. What's the reason? Amr Rabbi Oshia, but Inun Mitzvah Min Hamufchar needs to be a Mitzvah Min Hamufchar. Min needs to be the choicest of Mitzvahs. Uh, so when the Rabbanon argue with Rabbi Eliezer, they're talking about standard cup of uh, wine that uh, you you don't need to add water to make a Borei Pragafin, but for the Kos Shal Brach, you certainly do. So the Gemara says, Now according to the Rabbanon, what is this wine which you haven't added water to it? What is it fit for? Um, how is it drinkable? Amar Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says, Chazi l'kuraiti. It's fit for kuraiti. Kuraiti was some kind of uh, a mixture where they took the wine, uh, it was majority of wine, and they took it and they added some honey and some spices. And in that fashion, according to the Rabbanon, you could drink it. Tan Rabban, we learned in a brisa. Dalid dvarim nemru b'pas. There are four things that are said by bread. Ein manichin baser chayel apas. You're not allowed to put uh, raw meat on bread. Vein ma'avir and kos mole alapas. You should not pass a full cup over the bread. The idea here is that you don't want the uh, you don't want the uh, cup to spill on the bread and to ruin it. Vein zarkenas apas. You shouldn't throw bread. Vein somchenas akar b'pas. You shouldn't hold up the plate with bread. All these ideas that the bread is meant to be used for eating. It should not be used thrown around or used for other ways where it can be wasted or destroyed. Ameymar Marzutra Ravashi Karhu Rifta Bahade Hadadi. Ameymar Marzutra and Ravashi uh, they ate bread together. Isola Kamayo Tamri Vrimoni, they brought before them some dates and some pomegranates. Shakal Marzutra Pasakal Kamid Ravashi Distana. And then uh Marzutra took uh, in front of Ravashi, he threw in front of Ravashi Distana, which is a kind of a cooked meat. Amarle said him Losavar La Mar Lahaditanya ain't Zorganas Ochlin. Don't you hold of that which the uh, master said in the Braisa that you're not allowed to throw food? Why are you throwing food in front of me? So he answered him Ahiba Pas. Tanya. That brisa was only talking about bread. But the Gemara says, Vahatanya, but it says in another brisa, Keshem she'in zark and a sapas, kach ein zark and a sa'ochlin. Just like a person's not supposed to throw bread, a person's not supposed to throw any food. Amar he said back to him, Vahatanya, but there's another brisa which says, Afal pi she'in zark and a sapas, afal zark and a sa'ochlin. Even though you're not allowed to throw bread, you are allowed to throw food. So clearly it's not uh, it's not 100% in the brisa, so there must be some distinctions made. Ela lo kasha, rather it's not a kasha. Ha b'midi de mimis, ha b'midi de lo mimis. It depends if it's something that will become disgusting or not. If it's something that when you throw it, it's going to be ruined, it's going to be disgusting, then you're uh, you're not supposed to throw it. But if it's something that won't be ruined, then it, it, then it, it, it's no problem, and you're actually allowed to throw it. Now Rashi here, interestingly, Rashi says delo mimis rimon veegos vecholdover kasha, referring to pomegranate and nuts and anything that is hard. Um, it seems to be it seems to be that Rashi Rashi doesn't quote the thing that actually was thrown, which was the uh, the distant or the manishal basur mevushal. But it seems to be that that also would be included into something that uh, does not get ruined when it is thrown. Tan Rabban, we learned in a brayso, mamshichin yayin b'tzinoros lefnei chasen v'lefnei kali. You're allowed to draw wine through these pipes in front of the chasen. Kali seems to have been a way of celebrating at the wedding. V'zarkin lefneim kloyos ve'gozdim b'mosacham. And you're also allowed to throw in front of them various kinds of nuts in the summertime. Avalobi mosagesham but not in the rainy season uh, because it's going to get ruined. Again, going on the same principle we said before, you shouldn't throw food if it's going to be ruined. Avalog luskos lobi mosacham avalobi mosagesham, but you shouldn't throw rolls whether it's the summer or the rainy season. That's going to get ruined. The Gemara continues at the two dots. Amar of Yehuda, of Yehuda says, Shachach v'hichnes ochlin l'soch piv below bracha. If a person uh, forgot and he put food in his mouth without a bracha. Mesalkan l'tzad echor u'mevarech. According to Rav Yehuda, he should uh, move it to one side of his mouth and make the bracha with the food in his mouth. Tanya chada bola. Now we have one brisa which says he should swallow the food. Vatanya idach polta. And another brisa which says he should spit out the food. Vatanya idach masalkan. And finally, a third brisa says that he should move the food to the side of his mouth, as Rav Yehuda said. So how do we explain all these brises? Lokash, it's not difficult. Hada tanya bolan b'mashkin. When it says swallow it, it's talking about liquids. Uh, Rashi says by liquids it's impossible to move it to the side of the mouth and to make a bracha and also if you spit it out you're going to ruin it. Tanya Polta when it says spit it out but me did the something that won't become disgusting you can take it out of your mouth you'll put it you'll eat it again. Uh, so it's not going to be a loss of the food if you take it out of your mouth. Tanya Masalkan de mimis and when it says that you should move it to the side of your mouth that's something that will be disgusting if you would take it out of your mouth you wouldn't eat it again and also uh, but on the other hand it's food so you're able to make the bracha while it is at the side of the mouth and we'll continue with this discussion uh, on daf nun aleph amid aleph